The story starts in Japan, and the citizens heard a huge explosion. They looked out of the window, and a shockwave was caused by a strong alien monster. Then he started to launch a second attack, and he destroyed some houses. The damage was enormous, and the government was warned that a great danger had emerged. Meanwhile, we see a reporter broadcast live and warn viewers about the monster. Then a mysterious guy left his home and he was on the way to beat up the enemy. Following this we see a girl crying and the strong alien appeared. In the last moment she was saved, and he was asked, who he is. So he said he is just a hobby hero without a backstory. Saitama learned that Vaccine Man is a monster, who planned to obliterate humans and their evil civilization. So Vaccine Man powered him up and told Saitama that he didn't got a chance against him. Saitama wasn't scared and defeated him with one punch. He couldn't believe that his fight ended after one punch, and he was desperate. Followed we see three years earlier and Saitama met a crab man. He wondered why Saitama didn't run away. Mr. Crab said he ate expired Krabby Patties and he turned into a crab man. Suddenly Saitama replied, he is an unemployed man and he wasn't in the mood to run away because he got rejected by a job interview. Mr. Krabs liked him because his eyes was lifeless like his own eyes. Also he said he is interested to find a boy with a big chin and he planned to gonna rip his arms off. Later, Saitama couldn't believe to see a big-chinned brat and asked him if he messed with a big crab monster. Saitama learned he drew something on him with a marker, and he didn't know if he should warn the boy. Suddenly, Mr. Krabs appeared and attacked him. Saitama instinctively saved the boy and told the boy to flee, but he refused and said he wants his soccer ball back. Mr. Krabs was furious, and Saitama asked him why he would kill a little boy for a harmless prank. He said it was fun hurting innocent people, and his pride felt hurt because the boy had pranked him. Saitama was insulted and he laughed, because he thought Mr. Krabs looks like a villain of an anime that he watched. Saitama was attacked, and he got the intention to kill the big-chinned brat. In that moment, Saitama remembered about his childhood dream to become a strong hero, and he challenged Mr. Krabs in real life to a fight. Mr. Krabs was furious and he beat up Saitama with his crab arms. He said he will end Saitama's life, but Saitama played the Uno reverse card, and he defeated Mr. Krabs. So Saitama won the fight and after that day he trained until he went bald. He became so powerful and no one could beat him since that day. In addition, he wondered why his heart felt so empty. Suddenly, a huge man stomped into the grocery store, leaving a huge footprint on the ground. Then we see an evil scientist, who turned his little brother into a gigantic monster. The reason was his little brother's goal was to become the strongest in the world. He trained every day, and his big brother produced the ultimate steroids called Biceps King. Following this, the scientist gave his litter brother his produced steroids, and he turned into a giant biceps creature. As a result, he planned to conquer the whole world with his little brother. Then the scientist looked forward, and his little brother destroyed the towns. All residents were warned about a giant creature. The residents of City D ran away. After that, the scientist told his little brother that he is the strongest man in the world. Suddenly he noticed a man on his brother's shoulder. He commanded his little brother to kill him. But Steroids Man realized that he killed the wrong person. Then Steroids Man got angry, and he threw Saitama like a toy into the ground. Saitama was attacked, and he just waited until his enemy stopped the series of attacks. After that, the Steroids Man felt empty, and Saitama felt his pain. After that, he punched his enemy in the face, and Saitama knew overwhelming strength is pretty boring. He won the fight and went to a convenience store to buy groceries for his dinner. On the way home, he noticed that there is no signs that the evils of the world are disappearing. He wasn't sad about it, but something was bothering him. The reason is that in exchange for power, he lost his emotions and was bored every day. Then Saitama was insulted by a car monster, and he defeated him with a single punch again. Later he was sad, because he arrived home uninjured. As a result, he wished to find an enemy, who he can fight all out. In the followed morning, we see Saitama, who was attacked by a strong monster. So Saitama was shocked about his destroyed apartment and a monster showed up to attack him. However, his enemies said they are the true earthlings who plan to claim the world above ground. Then many of his friends appeared, and Saitama was threatened by them. He also said they had already eliminated 70% of the surface dwellers. So Saitama met finally strong opponents, and he was excited to fight against the subterraneans. He insulted them, and defeated the first monster with one punch. After that he looked forward for the battle against them. Saitama was attacked, and he was happy to go all out in the fight with them. Following this, they surrounded Saitama, and he used all his power to punch them. After a long fight, he was attacked by an enemy, who caused a huge explosion. The Earthlings thought it's over and they couldn't believe to meet such a strong man. Suddenly Saitama said he is just a hero for fun and said the surface is under his protection. 
the earthlings were angry and they attacked Saitama, but he dodged all of their attack. At that moment, Saitama realized he was excited like his first fight, and his heart started pounding. Later he noticed his emotions coming back to him, and the final boss showed up. He was angry, and Saitama rushed towards him to fight against the strong earthling king. Suddenly Saitama woke up, and he heard some noises outside. They called themselves the Subterranean. Saitama stamped at the Subterranean King and thought he will experience a wild battle with them. Unfortunately, they gave up immediately and went back home. A few days passed and Saitama lived his boring life in his apartment. He watched TV and he learned about mosquito outbreak in his town. After that, he went outside to watering his plant and he didn't saw the news about a dangerous swarm of mosquitoes. Then a mosquito landed on his hand. He smashed it, but the little mosquito didn't die. So he used all of his strengths and tried to kill the mosquito. In the meantime, all citizens were warned about the threat level demon. Then we see a handsome cyborg chasing the swarm of mosquitoes in the city of Z. Followed a thief used the time to steal valuables and he underestimated the warning about the mosquitoes. Suddenly swarm of mosquitoes appeared and he was confused. He was attacked and the mosquitoes sucked out all his blood. Out of nowhere we see a mosquito queen who wasn't delighted with the small amount of blood. Suddenly Genos appeared and he shot fire against the mosquito queen. He understood that she commanded all mosquitoes to suck out all blood of the humans, and she planned to suck out Genos. Following this, she commanded all mosquitoes to suck out his blood, but he attacked her army with a fire blast. She couldn't believe that Genos had burned down all her beloved mosquitoes. In the meantime, Saitama thought he got the mosquito, but he failed. Then we see Genos, who started his next attack against the Mosquito Queen. She could withstand his attacks and Genos powered him up. He increased his power and launched a strong fire blast. The Mosquito Queen was able to dodge his attack and ripped of one of his arms. She looked down on Genos, but he ripped of her legs in just a short moment. However, she tried to escape, but Genos didn't let her flee and attacked her again. She understood that Genos is dangerous and commanded her Mosquito Gang to suck up all bloods of the animals. After that, Genos was ready to use all of his power to wipe her out. Out of nowhere, Saitama appeared, who tried to kill a single Mosquito with insect spray. He saw the swarm of Mosquito and Genos told him to run away. Saitama couldn't escape in time, and the Mosquito Queen prepared her next attack. In that moment, Genos used his cyborg power and burned down all mosquitoes with ease. He was sure about his victory, and the whole city was destroyed after his attack. Suddenly, Saitama thanked him for saving him, and he couldn't believe that Saitama was alive. After that, the Mosquito Queen laughed at him, and she was alive too. She evolved to Supercell Mosquito, and she attacked Gens with her super speed. Genos didn't manage to dodge her attack and he was badly injured. In addition, he realized that his enemy became more powerful after consuming the huge amount of blood. Then Genos decided to sacrifice his life and he activated his self-destruct mechanism. In the last moment, Saitama showed up and he just slapped her in the face. In the followed day, Genos visited his new master and Saitama thought he just made a joke. Saitama told him he wasn't looking for an apprentice and he wondered about his cyborg body. Then Genos thought his new master is a cyborg too and asked about his skin-colored armor on his head. Saitama felt bullied and Genos apologized for his rude words. Following this, he told Saitama about his backstory, that his family died by an accident. So Saitama learned that a cyborg got out of control and he barely survived and became a cyborg himself to find and eliminate the evil cyborg. A few hours later, he was annoyed hearing his long story, and he stopped Genos. In the meantime, another evil scientist learned that his prototype monster was wiped out. He got the idea to study Saitama as his new experiment, and he commanded his assistant to send him a bait. After that, Genos asked him to teach him to become strong like him. Saitama said he will surpass him, and he asked him if he is ready to handle his secret to become stronger. Suddenly, a mantis appeared, and Saitama defeated him with just one punch. Then we see more enemies outside. Genos jumped out the window, but Saitama had already defeated the other enemies. Out of nowhere he was attacked, but he said he is fine. Following this a cyborg appeared, and Genos wondered if he is the one who eliminated his family. Genos attacked him, and he asked the cyborg a few questions. Meanwhile Saitama was surrounded by two strong monsters, and they got the intention to beat him up. Genos worried about his master, but he needed to focus on his own fight. So Genos used his fire attacks but the enemy withstand his attacks. The cyborg said they were sended from the house of evolution. Then we see Saitama, he was bored, and he said the ground is the perfect place for a nap. The beast king thought he is stupid, and he insulted Saitama. 
so Saitama showed them they are the weaklings and he noticed that his suit was dirty. The Beast King was angry and he wanted to show him his true power. He attacked Saitama and slayed his own teammates. Followed, he turned into a high-ranking monster and increased his power. Saitama dodged all his attack with ease and he wasn't feared. Finally, he launched an attack too. As a result, Saitama defeated the strong Beast King with his normal punches. One of the enemy's teammate tried to flee, but Saitama found him. Then we see Genos interrogated the cyborg gorilla, and he said Genos didn't stand a chance against the second strongest warrior of their team. However, he learned the Beast King was defeated and apologized for being rude. Following this, we learned about a scientist who had lived a long time ago. He was a genius, and he was able to make a number of contributions to human knowledge. However, he became disillusioned with the world. Also, none of his ideas ever received even the slightest support from the scientific community. He had a plan to evolve humanity, but his plan failed because his idea was deemed dangerous. So Genius decided to pursue his dream at any cost. After he turned 70 years, his efforts began to yield results. Following this, Genius cloned himself and called his laboratory House of Evolution. Suddenly, Saitama stopped the story and asked what he had to do with him. They threatened Cyborg Gorilla to summarize the story, and he apologized. So Cyborg Gorilla explained that his boss had become very curious about Saitama's body, but he wasn't into men. Genos explained his master that the scientist is a weirdo and they needs to eliminate him. Saitama agreed and he said they need to hurry because there are a sale on tomorrow for the new PlayStation. Before Genos left, he asked Cyborg Gorilla if there were more cyborgs in the House of Evolution. Cyborg Gorilla replied he was the only combat cyborg. Meanwhile, Genius and his clones were shocked that Saitama and Genos defeated their elite force. Also, they found out that they were on the way to destroy his laboratory. Genius said they should prepare for the release of Carnage Kabuto. All clones were scared, but their leader said they had no other choice. Then we see Saitama and Genos running towards the evil scientist's hideout. Genos was sure that Saitama could fly, but he replied that humans are not born with the ability to fly. Later, they arrived at the House of Evolution. Genos immediately activated his cyborg abilities and pulverized the entire building. Saitama learned that Genos thought it was the most efficient way to destroy them all in one swoop. After that, they found an underground basement. Then we see a clone fighting against a monster, but he couldn't survive and Monster Kabuto wiped him out. A short time later, Genius appeared in the room and he greeted his created monster. Kabuto was a bully and complained that he was locked up his whole life. The scientist said he was locked up because his mentally is unstable. So Kabuto got even more angry and said he is the ultimate creature that every had sought. Then the scientist asked him for a favor and made a deal with Kabuto. He offered to free him if he managed to capture the two strong enemies. Followed we see Saitama and Genos sensed a living being deeper in the hideout. Kabuto appeared out of nowhere and smashed Genos with his monster power. Saitama was shocked to see Genos smashed into the walls. After that he was challenged to a duel by Kabuto. They decided to fight in the biggest room of the facility and Kabut underestimated his opponent. Suddenly Genos appeared, and Kabuto was surprised that he is still alive. Genos attacked Kabuto with strong fire blasts and showed him his true power. Kabuto looked down on him and he withstand his machine gun blow. Saitama told his apprentice that he shouldn't push himself, but he refused. Then Genos used his last energy, but his attack was reflected back. Saitama was furious that he screwed up Genos' crispy haircut. Meanwhile, Genius tried to escape and he was badly injured. He remembered that he always been critical of humans their inferior abilities. He remembered that he was 15 when it occurred to him. Since that day, he started to create his plan to evolve the human beings. Unfortunately, he hadn't planned for a bald guy in a Fashion Nova men's suit to get in his way. But he was sure that his strongest creature was able to defeat the hobby hero. Saitama then started running towards Kabuto and asked if he is the ultimate weapon of the House of Evolution. Kabuto looked down on him and he showed Saitama his enormous speed. Following this, he sensed a dangerous aura, and his instincts told him to run away. Kabuto was shocked by his opponent, because all his instincts warned him not to attack Saitama. As a result, he asked Saitama how he got so powerful. Saitama was surprised about his question, and he told Genos to listen carefully too. Following this, he noticed that the scientist genius was behind him. Genos thought it's too risky letting these guys know Saitama's secret. However, Saitama told them his secret about his enormous power. Saitama said he trained for years and did 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and 100 squats. He also ran 10 kilometers every day and ate like a bodybuilder. In the beginning, he thought he will die by his intense training, but he didn't give up. 
He kept doing his training and a year later he was bald. As a result, he gained super strength and was able to surpass himself. They couldn't believe what Saitama said and thought he was joking. So Genos yelled at him and he said he just did standard strength training. Also he said he didn't ask to study under him just to hear jokes. Saitama was aware that Genos might not believe him, but he was telling the truth. Suddenly Kabuto got angry too and called Saitama a liar. He increased his power and turned into a dangerous monster. Kabuto was in his final form and he got the plan to murder Saitama with his enormous strength. Following this he prepared his attack and Saitama was deep in thought. So Saitama was punched in his face and he flew around the room. He ignored the facts that Kabuto threw him like his toy. He thought that he made a horrible mistake because Kabuto said he will be on a rampage for a whole week. However, Saitama realized that he can't let Kabuto on rampage for several weeks and Genius thought he got no chance against Kabuto. Then Saitama realized he will disturb his bargain day at the supermarket. As a result, he defeated Kabuto with one punch. Following this, Genos told Genius why he made such a fuss. The reason was that today was the bargain day he was looking forward to. Genos tried to calm him down, and he told him that if they hurry, they would make it in time. In the days that follow, we see a man complaining because the rich are getting richer, and the poor are being punished by society. Hammerhead wanted to change society and tried to get people on his side with his speech in order to create an utopia. Unfortunately, none of the people were interested in his talk, and he got mad. They then stood in front of a wealthy investor's building, and Hammerhead was jealous. He ordered his subject to demolish the rich investor's building. The building immediately collapsed, and everyone in the area fled from the villains. After that, one of Hammerhead's crew member told him they destroyed the wrong building, then we see the hero, Moomin Rider, who helped a little boy with his problem. The little boy was grateful that he had pulled his balloon down from the tree. Meanwhile, Saitama woke up and he had a nightmare about a person who wanted to play rock scissor paper with him. Saitama realized it was just a dream and he watched TV. He learned about the B-class criminal Hammerhead, who destroyed many buildings in City F. Saitama brushed his teeth and he didn't care about Hammerhead. Suddenly he found out that all group members shaved their hair, and he felt offended because they stole his look. Saitama decided to punish them, and he wanted to crush them all into the ground. Following this, we see City F and Hammerhead cause trouble with his group. Out of nowhere, the bicyclist for Justice Moomin Rider appeared. He challenged Hammerhead but didn't stand a chance and lost the fight. After that, Investor Zaniru was warned about the terrorist, but he refused to run away. Suddenly his bodyguard showed up and Investor Zaniru was glad to see Sonic. Sonic said he will handle it, and they didn't need to worry. So Sonic said he's going to knock them out and break all their bones. Then we see Hammerhead and his group heading to Zaniru's building and planning to destroy his home. Suddenly Speedasonic showed up and he said that none of his enemies could escape alive. Hammerhead commanded his followers to attack Sonic, but he possessed Trafalgar Law's devil fruit and severed their heads from their bodies. So everyone was easily defeated by Sonic and everyone was confused because Sonic was way too fast. Hammerhead was scared, and he tried to protect himself with his battlesuit power. Sonic looked down on him, and he was attacked by a huge rock. Meanwhile, Satama was mistaken for a criminal. Then we see Sonic again, and he was surprised that his opponent didn't try to flee. He dodged all of Hammerhead's attacks, and Hammerhead insulted him. Then Hammerhead said he fall for his trap, but Sonic wasn't afraid because he was sure to win. Sonic rushed towards his opponent, and he increased his speed while running towards him. Hammerhead said he got him and thought he had smashed Sonic into the ground. Out of nowhere Sonic defeated Hammerhead from behind, and he reported his client that his job is done. Then he noticed that Hammerhead's body disappeared. He managed to escape as his skull was always thicker than that of a normal human. Then we see Saitama, who was looking for him. In the meantime Genos was repaired by Dr. Kusano, and he told about his new master who saved him. Genos was grateful that Saitama saved his life twice and Dr. Kuseno was happy to see Genos had found a good friend. Then Dr. Kuseno said he built a new set of augmentations, and when it's done he could definitely surpass his master. After that, we see Hammerhead thinking that Saitama wanted to join his group. Suddenly, Saitama was attacked, and Hammerhead was shocked that his punch didn't work. Saitama said his battle suit looks lame, and he insulted Hammerhead. So he got angry, and increased his power to launch another attack with full power. At that moment, Saitama remembered using this move all the time as a kid, and he easily stopped Hammerhead. Saitama realized that his enemy was a lot like him, and he destroyed his battle suit. Then Hammerhead asked to spare him, and Saitama said he would spare him if he stopped doing evil deeds. 
Later Saitama was on the way home and Sonic appeared, who was looking for Hammerhead. Suddenly Saitama was attacked, but he dodged all of Sonic's attacks. Saitama noticed that he was mistaken for a follower of Hammerhead and tried to clear up the misunderstanding. Sonic didn't believe him, saying his bald head proves otherwise. Then Sonic told him about his backstory, that he is a ninja, who had been perfecting his techniques since childhood. His pride was hurt when Saitama twice dodged his attacks. Saitama thought he just wants to try out his moves on him. Following this, Sonic showed Saitama his speed, but he wasn't impressed. Saitama was bored, and he asked Sonic if he could go home. Sonic couldn't accept that Saitama could see through his attacks and tried to hit him with a kick. However, Saitama dodged his kick and he accidentally hit his nuts. He said sorry, and Sonic felt a lot of pain. A short time later, Sonic learned his opponent's name and said next time, he will end his life. Saitama couldn't take him seriously and wished him good luck. In the evening, Saitama told the story about Sonic, and Genos didn't knew him either. Then Saitama got angry because he realized that nobody knows him as a hero. Genos was shocked by Saitama's problem because he defeated countless monsters and was still an unknown hero. He wished to become a popular hero. Genos remembered that another hero got the credits for defeating Hammerhead in his group. Suddenly Genos found a way to help Saitama and he told him about the Hero Association. That's how Saitama came up with the idea of registering with his friend Genos in the Hero Association. Later we see two cyborgs who tried to murder Hammerhead, but he was alive because of his thick skull. Then we see Saitama filling out registration forms while watching the news. He knew one wrong step and he would end it like Hammerhead with his life. In the following day, we see the Hero Association and they decided that Moomin Rider will remain the top-ranked Class C hero. Then they discussed the official hero test. Unfortunately, they had a problem that the quality of the applicants decreases every year and they plan to evaluate the candidates more critically. Then we see many candidates preparing for the exam. They warmed up and Saitama was underestimated by the other candidates. After that, the first fitness test began and Saitama did his side jumps. After that, Saitama had to sprint and lift weights. Saitama almost destroyed the whole building with his enormous powers and he managed to get the highest scores everywhere. Later, Saitama was waiting for the results and his buddy Genos showed up. He asked his friend how it was and he said both tests were easy. Genos said that the written test was very easy and anyone can get full points on it. An hour later they got the results and Genos was certified as a S-class hero. Saitama also thought he was an S-class hero, and Genos congratulated him. Then he asked his master about an interview, because Genos was asked about the House of Evolution. The Hero Association asked him if he had destroyed the entire building. They were happy to learn that he wiped out the criminals, and Genos was registered as an official S-class hero. Meanwhile, Saitama learned that he is actually a C-class hero. Genos mistook the top half of the C, and Genos planned to clear up the misunderstanding, but Saitama said it would only make him more embarrassed. Then we see a guy he was notified that Genos was certified as a S-class hero. The popular and handsome hero stared at his picture and was already planning to meet him someday. Later we see Saitama and Genos in the lecture hall. A-class hero Snake looked down on them and told them to take their hero status seriously. Suddenly he got angry because Saitama wasn't listening to him. A-class hero Snake tried to intimidate him and performed a weird TikTok dance. Saitama had other problems as his gum was stuck to his face and Genos asked if he was alright. In the evening they went home, and Genos told his master more about the Hero Association. Saitama wasn't really interested in the Hero Association, and Genos was already looking forward to working together as a hero with his master. Also Genos said he is now officially his disciple, and Saitama realized that Genos will cause him a lot of trouble in the future. Meanwhile Snake complained about the two new heroes, and thought they are amateurs. But a government leader contradicted him, saying that the two are not weak. He told Snake that Saitama barely passed the written exam, but he almost destroyed the entire building on the fitness test. Snake couldn't believe that a stupid guy like Saitama could be stronger than him. Then we see Saitama, he realized that Genos is pretty awesome because he was among the top tier heroes. Suddenly Snake showed up and he tried to lecture Saitama. He attacked Saitama with a weird technique, but his attack failed. A few days later they were on a mountain and Genos told him that they are both ranked last. Then he said, after performing more heroic acts, they will acquire hero names. Saitama hoped he didn't get a stupid nickname like Caped Baldi. After that, Genos thanked him that he agreed to his unreasonable request. Saitama wanted to help Genos get stronger and was willing to practice with him. Genos told his master that he wants to fight with him all out. However, Genos launched his first attack 
and Saitama dodged his kick. Genos launched more powerful attacks against his master, and Saitama jumped into the sky. Suddenly, Saitama was shot down with a laser beam that pulverized part of the mountain. Saitama wasn't injured, and Genos increased his speed. Following this Saitama increased his speed too, and Genos didn't manage to hit his master. He was faster than Genos and disappeared. So Genos located him and found him running away. Genos activated all of his cannons and aimed at Saitama, but he appeared behind him. Then Genos said that he would like to fight Saitama all out, and that he shouldn't hold back. Genos was aware that Saitama's powers knew no limits and that he could be destroyed in one blow. So Saitama showed him his full power and Genos felt the bloodlust of his punch. Saitama attacked him, but he stopped his punch before hitting his apprentice. After that, Genos was stunned, and he realized that Saitama is a monster, because he destroyed the mountain behind them. Then we see hero Amai mask, he found out about Genos' location, and went off. In the meantime, Saitama had dinner, and he challenged Genos to a duel over udon noodles. A few moments later, the restaurant owner was stunned, because Genos had eaten a whole bucket full of udon noodles. Suddenly Amai mask entered the noodle restaurant and he talked to Genos. Saitama warned his friend that he might be a rookie crusher like Snake. They went outside and Genos asked him why he wants to talk with him. Saitama was worried about Genos and wondered if he is alright. A few minutes later, Genos returned to the noodle restaurant and Saitama thought he defeated Amai Mask. Genos told him that he just welcomed him and a fan of Amai Mask asked to shake his hands. On the way home, Saitama was surprised that S-Class and C-Class heroes are treated differently. Meanwhile, Genos recalled the words of Amai Mask. He said that a professional hero must always be a beautiful symbol of justice. Genos thought that Amai Mask was looking for a fight, but he stopped him and gave him some advice for the future as a member of the heroes. In the end, Amai Mask said he expect great things from him. After that, Genos said goodbye, and Saitama got a strange feeling hearing his words. In addition, we see Amai Mask and he had found interest in Genos. Later, Genos showed up at Saitama's apartment and asked if he could move in with him. Saitama refused, but Genos convinced him with a huge amount of money. A few days have passed since Genos moved into his master's apartment, and Saitama wondered what his student was writing down. Saitama was aware that Genos was smarter than him and didn't know what to teach him. Suddenly, Genos said that if he doesn't do hero activities regularly, his name will be removed from the hero registry. Saitama said that he watched the news every day, and no disaster was reported. So Genos explained that the reporters don't cover ordinary crimes. Saitama couldn't believe that he was only now finding out about the rules. Saitama then tried to act smart, but he didn't know how he could help Genos become stronger. Suddenly he saw a magazine, and recommended that Genos should try to become one of the top 10 heroes. Then he went looking for a criminal, and ran all over the city. Unfortunately, he couldn't find any criminals because the city was quiet all day. Saitama's attempt to catch a criminal failed, and he went home. The following day Saitama was nervous because the city was quiet again. Suddenly he was attacked by Sonic, and Saitama recognized the guy. Unfortunately, he couldn't remember his name and said he didn't have time to play with him. Feeling offended, Sonic attacked Saitama with his sword, but Saitama destroyed his sword. Saitama told him he was busy, and Sonic was afraid of Saitama's aura. Suddenly, Tank Top Tiger was reported that a criminal causing problems in the city. So Saitama thought Sonic would be mistaken for a criminal, but he was wrong. He tried to clear up the misunderstanding, but Tank Top Tiger said he had never heard of him as a hero. Then Saitama was taught that he shouldn't threaten people anymore. Tank Top Tiger tried to provoke Saitama to make him look good in front of all townspeople. Out of nowhere he was attacked by Sonic. All the people were scared and ran away. Sonic asked him if he would run away as a hero, or if he had the courage to stand up and fight. So he attacked Saitama with his shurikens, but Saitama dodged his attacks. He told Sonic to stop his attack, but he didn't listen to him. In the last moment Saitama saved a little boy, and he was furious. He said he is busy and haven't time to play with Sonic's stupid games. Following this he noticed that Sonic was a bad guy, and he knocked him out. In the followed day the Hero Association learned that Sonic was involved in several assassination. After that, S-Class Heroine Tornado appeared in the Hero Association office. She learned about the investigation in City Z, and she was angry for some reasons. But they managed to calm her down, and Tornado said they will regret it to turn down her offer. A few days later we see the Hero Association HQ, and they were reported that Watchdog Man investigated City Q. They all knew that City Q is a hot zone with more casualties and monsters than any other area. Then they discussed about the other cities, and they said nothing bad happened. 
Following this they said sometimes, strong monsters appeared at level catastrophe, but they were eliminated. Suddenly, a man asked about City Z because he noticed that there was a lot of potential for a disaster to break out there. However, one of the council members said they had sent two A-class heroes to investigate City Z, so Golden Ball and Spring Mustachio were on the way to investigate the City Z. The two heroes looked around the city and planned to go to an abandoned place. When they arrived at a locked entrance, they were aware that they could be attacked at any time. Golden Ball asked if his colleague knew why the monster rate in this area was so high. Spring Mustachio knew nothing and Genos noticed that two guys entered his hood. Genos sensed that they are chasing something and cleaned the toilet. After that we see a seaweed monster who heard about a strong monster in the ghost town. Then the two heroes discovered the seaweed monster and they planned to strike him down. Golden Ball shot a rocket, but his attack was reflected. Suddenly he was attacked by the seaweed monster. Spring Mustachio was worried about his friend, but he was attacked too. He managed to dodge his opponent's attack and performed a magic trick. Following this, he fought against the monster with his sword skills. Spring Mustachio managed to block all of his attacks. He then prepared to make a sword attack and pierce the monster. The seaweed monster didn't want to be turned into sushi and just jumped away. So Spring Mustachio was impressed that his opponent dodges his attack and he realized that he needs to call for help. He then contacted the Heroes Association and asked for help. After that, the seaweed monster said he was from another town and he heard about a monster in the ghost town. In the meantime, a call for help was sent to the Hero Association consulting team and they learned that the two A-class heroes were in trouble. They tried to send nearby heroes to the ghost town as reinforcements. Then we see Spring Mustachio. He had no more strength and fell unconscious. A short time later, the seaweed monster discovered Saitama. He was on his way home to cook dinner. Saitama was attacked, and he remembered that he had forgotten to buy seaweed. Later Genos learned that Saitama bought seaweed for a cheap price. Genos pointed out to him that seaweed is good for hair growth, and he hurt Saitama's feelings. Later the Hero Association reported that the two A-class heroes were taken to the hospital seriously injured, but the monster was defeated by a mysterious person. Afterwards, the S-class heroine Tornado also found out about the case. She yelled at the man, who initially refused her request to investigate the ghost town. We then see a group of heroes investigating the crime scene and wondering which monster had caused the enormous damage. Also they found seaweed on the crime scene. In addition, many rumors were spread about a strong monster in Ghost Town. A few days later, Genos told his master that his rank has gone up from last place to 342nd place. Then, Saitama learned that Genos is still in the last rank, but his popularity rank is number 6. Saitama was jealous and he learned that Genos was nicknamed the Cyborg Prince. A few weeks later, a huge meteorite flew towards the Earth, and scientists were shocked by the discovery. The reason for their frightened faces was that the meteorite was the size of the moon. They also calculated that the meteorite will soon hit the Earth and will first hit City Z. So the Hero Association called all Class S heroes to a meeting, and Saitama asked if Genos could bring Logan Paul's prime drink with him on the way home. Following this, Genos arrived in the Hero Building, and he was greeted by Bang. Genos recognized Silverfang, who was ranked third among Class S heroes. He explained to Genos that all Class S heroes have been called up because there is a big problem. So Silverfang said that it is the threat level dragon and the meteorite will hit the earth in 30 minutes. Genos learned that the entire city of Z will be destroyed and they most likely have no chance of evacuating everyone in time. Genos then asked what he was planning to do and Bang said that he had to protect his dojo. Meanwhile, all the residents of City Z tried to escape the meteorite, but they couldn't do it in time. Genos was aware that everyone would die but he tried everything to protect people. So Genos activated his Iron Man suit that he had stolen from the Avengers and increased his power. Suddenly a cyborg appeared who also planned to destroy the meteorite. Genos recognized Cyborg Bofoy, who was also one of the S-Class heroes. Then Genos asked that he needed his help, but he denied Genos his request. Bofoy replied he only came to field test his new super weapon. Genos then learned that the cyborg in front of him is just a drone that is remotely controlled with an Xbox controller. He also said that he was not Cyborg Bofoy, and Genos learned he is the Class S hero Metal Knight. After that, Metal Knight launched his attack, and he fired missiles at the meteorite. Then the missiles hit the meteorite, and Genos was amazed by the destructive power. Unfortunately, Metal Knight's attack failed, and the meteorite continued to fly towards Earth. Genos calculated the impact time and he was nervous because if his attack failed, all the residents would die. 
suddenly Bang appeared. He calmed him down and said that he was still young and should trust in his powers. Genos gained courage, and he put his Iron Man core into his arm so that he can gather enough energy. Genos then shot at the meteorite with all his strength, but it didn't work. Bang thought his attack would push the meteorite back, but he was wrong, and Genos ran out of energy. When Genos lost hope, his master showed up. He introduced himself as a hero, and immediately wanted to save the world. However, Saitama jumped into the sky and prepared his normal punch. He smashed the meteorite with his fist, and the meteorite shattered into many small pieces. Silver Fang Bang was impressed by Saitama's overwhelming powers, and the entire city shook at that moment. Then, the meteorite fragments fell to the earth. Saitama thought he had saved the city, and he didn't notice that the buildings behind him were being destroyed. Three days later, people were informed that City Z was not completely destroyed. Genos couldn't forgive himself for his incompetence, because he couldn't do anything. But Saitama said that he didn't do anything wrong, and that he should be happy that no one died. Genos agreed with him, and he was aware that his master was performing a miracle. Genos feared that many would blame Saitama for the damage, even though he had saved all the residents. Suddenly Saitama asked about their hero ranking. Saitama learned that he had moved up from rank 342 to rank 5. Then Genos said that he deserved more recognition, but the Hero Association thought that Genos and Metal Knight destroyed the meteorite. After that, Saitama learned about the threat level system, and Genos was confident that no threat is a problem for him. Suddenly, Saitama said words that inspired Genos, and he immediately wrote them down on a notebook. Meanwhile, Saitama decided to find a threat, and he didn't allow Genos to accompany him because otherwise he would get all the credits again. Saitama then looked around the city and was accused of being a fraud by Tank Top Tiger. Suddenly, he called his big brother and Tank Top Black Hole showed up. He was also told that Saitama was a fraud who took credit for work done by others. Saitama asked them who they were, and Tank Top Tiger got angry. Then Tank Top Black Hole had the idea to make the residents hate Saitama. He shouted if he was the culprit for the destroyed city, and the residents gathered around Saitama. The bully's plan worked, and he was able to trick people into hating Saitama. So all the residents were turned against Saitama and they thought he was the villain. Saitama couldn't believe that they all believed the lies, and they tried to make him give up being a hero. In the meantime, Genos found out about the hate messages. Then we see the angry people who all insulted Saitama. Silver Fang observed the situation and did not intervene because Saitama will have to deal with haters more often in the future. Suddenly, the Tank Top brothers said that they will punish Saitama. Silver Fang found the two brothers pitiful and was not surprised that they will never get above Class B. Afterwards, the Tank Top brothers showed their TikTok dances and were angry because they couldn't get any new followers. Tank Top Tiger was immediately defeated and thrown away. Tank Top Black Hole's attack failed too, and he admitted that he lied to everyone. Suddenly, Saitama said he had destroyed the city and shouted that he didn't care about the insults directed at him. He said they can blame him of being the bad guy. Suddenly, Geno stopped him and he was happy to have a great master. On the way home, Geno said that he had never met anyone as incredible as him. In addition, Geno said that even if everyone is against him, he will always follow him. In the following days, we see an octopus trying to rule the world. He had a message saying that the Seafolk clan would conquer the surface and they should surrender. Meanwhile, Moomin Rider was on the way to save the townspeople. But Saitama happened to run into the monster and played squid game with him. So Moomin Rider missed the fight, and he heard about the hero Saitama. During the night, he found out that Saitama moved up to rank 5. Below, we see more sea monsters that swam to the surface and a shorty with huge melons screamed for help. The problem was that the sailor clan scared them, and they planned to conquer the surface. Suddenly, Class A hero Stinger showed up and was ready for the fight. The residents were happy to see him and cheered him on because they thought he will defeat the enemy. In the meantime, Genos used his cyborg abilities to dry the dishes and he told Saitama that he moved up to rank 2. Suddenly, Genos asked his master if Saitama had defeated a seafolk monster yesterday. Saitama had trouble remembering names, and there were reports about the monsters on TV. They learned that the monsters came from Bikini Bottom and Moomin Rider set out to protect the people. Then we see Stinger who was badly beaten, and Spongebob's friends looked down on him. Despite his injuries, Stinger didn't give up and he attacked the monsters. As a result, he was able to defeat them and he celebrated his victory. Out of nowhere, the leader of the Seafolk appeared and defeated Stinger. Saitama and Genos were on the way to City J, and Genos said he will try to locate the enemies. Afterwards, we see the Hero Association, and they learned about Stinger. Moomin Rider was on the highway, and other heroes said that he should turn back because Class C heroes can't handle it. 
Meanwhile, Deep Sea King was walking on the streets and a hero was looking at him. Lightning Max sensed that a danger was looming behind him, and he instinctively attacked the enemy. He was shocked that the monster appeared behind him. Then he tried to run away, but he was immediately attacked and smashed into a building. Lightning Max knew he had no chance of winning and tried to use his secret weapon to defeat the monster. He lost and fell unconscious from the building, but a Class S hero saved him. Puri Puri Prisoner broke out of prison, and Sonic was surprised to see that heroes are also in the prisons. Sonic learned that Puri Puri is a prisoner because he always attacks beautiful men and forces them to pick up soap. Then Deep Sea King appeared, and Puri Puri Prisoner could not forgive the enemy for disfiguring two men's pretty faces. He was furious and couldn't believe that the enemy caused him to destroy the sweater of his boyfriend. However, the Deep Sea King was hungry and said he would turn his enemy into a Krabby Patty. Puri Puri Prisoner wasn't scared, and he hit back and his opponent was impressed by his power. Meanwhile, Sonic noticed that Puri Puri Prisoner just acted like a tough boy, but he was badly injured. Suddenly, Puri Puri Prisoner decided to transform into his Sailor Moon form, but he only took off his clothes. Sonic was shocked to see him naked, and Puri Puri was sure to win with his Angel-style form. Then they started the fight, and Deep Sea King was attacked by Puri Puri Prisoner. After that, Genos located the enemy, but he couldn't reach his master on the phone. Meanwhile, Deep Sea King withstand all his opponent's attack. He looked down on Puri Puri Prisoner and he punched him back. Deep Sea King's power was on another level and he knocked his opponent out. Then he used Puri Puri Prisoner as his punching ball and he sent him to the moon with a strong kick. Deep Sea King had a lot of fun and he challenged Sonic to fight him next. Sonic accepted his challenge and he attacked Deep Sea King with a strong kick. Suddenly Deep Sea King used one of his special abilities, but Sonic dodged his attack. Sonic said he will never lose against a weakling like him and he dodged the monster's punch with ease. However, Deep Sea King got a liking on him, and he increased his speed too. Deep Sea King turned into a stronger monster and said he got a power-up. Then we see Moomin Rider, and he met Saitama, who tried to find his friend. He asked Moomin Rider if he had seen his friend's Genos. Below we see Amai Mask being interviewed and he said that he is just a hobby hero. He promoted his new song and said that he wanted to bring courage to the heroes with his song. In the meantime Sonic was in trouble and he tried to retreat. Unfortunately, Deep Sea King was faster, and he crushed Sonic with his hands. Sonic managed to escape and met Genos during his retreat. He said that all the heroes were defeated and Genos wondered why the guy was naked. Then we see the residents who were evacuated and hid in a building. Deep Sea King was excited and he entered the building. Following this, a Class C hero told the monster that they will surrender and asked Deep Sea King to spare them in return. He refused the offer and threatened to eat all people in the room. Suddenly some heroes presented themselves and Snake was ready to risk his life. Afterwards, we see Moomin Rider, who wanted to show Saitama the way. Saitama saw a naked man, and he thought that the man was not evacuated in time. Later we see Snake and his friends, they were scared of the monster. Saitama couldn't find the man, and all the heroes were seriously injured. Afterwards, Geno showed up, and the Hero Association couldn't reach Moomin Rider on the phone. Saitama found Moomin Rider's phone, and explained to the Heroes Association that Moomin Rider is on his way to fight against the monster. In addition, Saitama said that he would take care of the problem. Then we see Genos, who attacked the Deep Sea King with his Super Cyborg Blast Punch. Genos shoot him to the moon, and he caused a huge hole into the wall. The citizens were fascinated by Genos and thought he had won. Following this, they celebrated Genos' victory, but Deep Sea King knocked him down from behind. Genos let his guard down, and he was seriously injured by his opponent. Meanwhile, the Hero Association found out that Saitama was a C-Class hero. The board chairman would stop other C-Class heroes from doing so, but they believed in him and sent him the location of the monster. Later, Genos ordered all citizens to run away because he will stop the monster in front of him. The Deep Sea King didn't want to let them escape, but Genos charged at him and attacked him with a cyborg kick. They started the fight and exchanged countless blows against each other. Then Genos managed to hit his enemy with a strong uppercut and he shot a barrage of fire at him. He also jumped into the air to blind him and continued to attack with his machine gun blows. Unfortunately, the Deep Sea King managed to withstand his attacks, and a girl tried to cheer him on. The girl was spat with acid, but Genos jumped in front of her to protect her. As a result, Genos' body was melted and Deep Sea King crushed him into the wall of the building. He looked down on Genos and called him pathetic for being able to dodge the attack but choosing to save the girl. When Deep Sea King wanted to kill his opponent, Moomin Rider appeared and attacked him with his bike. Moomin Rider showed no fear and he attacked the monster, but his attack failed. 
Afterwards, Deep Sea King remembered that he wanted to kill Genos, but Moomin Rider didn't give up and attack the monster again. He knew he wasn't a big help in the fight, because he was a weakling. Despite everything, he couldn't accept being idle and tried to gain as much time as possible. The citizens could sense his determination, and they all believed he could win. So they all tried to cheer for Moomin Rider and said that he can win. Moomin Rider was motivated and he fought with all his strength, but he lost immediately. At the last moment, Saitama appeared and he told him that he had fought well. Afterwards he noticed that Genos was injured, and he was worried about his student. He was then attacked by Deep Sea King, but the attack caused no damage. The Deep Sea King was amazed that he survived his attack, and the citizens realized that Saitama is the C-Class newbie. Meanwhile, Deep Sea King said that he is the strongest, but Saitama was bored, so he attacked Saitama, but he defeated him with just one punch, and everyone was shocked. Genos knew that his master would win, and the citizens had to realize that the C-Class hero had won. Saitama was disappointed by the boring fight. Below we see Sonic, who returned to get his revenge, but Deep Sea King was defeated. In the following days, Saitama was on his way home and he discovered a drone. Genos explained to him that the heroes regularly send fan letters, and there was also one for Saitama in the box. Saitama opened his letter and was accused of being a fraud. Genos was sad and remembered the day against the Deep Sea King because everyone was cheering Saitama for the victory. Unfortunately, an ugly guy showed up claiming that the monsters were just weakened from fighting the previous heroes. He made fun of the heroes, and one of the citizens wanted to beat him up. Saitama then posed as a villain to calm down the citizens. As a result, everyone believed that he was really a fraud, and they committed to hating him. Genos was aware that Saitama was only pretending to be a villain so that the other heroes wouldn't lose their reputation. He also admired his master even more because he valued peace more than fame. Afterwards, Saitama discovered a fan letter thanking him for his heroic deed. Then he discovered that he moved up to rank 1 and he was called to the Hero Association. The Hero Association congratulated him and gave him the choice to be promoted to a B-class hero. He accepted so he could catch up with Genos and he was asked a few more questions. Meanwhile, many doubted his strength, but some members of the association recognized him and said that he will surpass all of the S-class heroes someday. Afterwards we see Amai Mask, who was angry because Genos was defeated and ruined the reputation of the heroes. Then we see two injured A-class heroes who learned about the article about Genos. Puri Puri Prisoner showed up in the room and he planned to turn the two boys into his side chicks. They ran away and he found an article about him that called him a failure. In the evening, Saitama received a certificate as a B-class hero, and he planned to eat Odin. Then Moomin Rider planned to invite him to dinner and he congratulated him on his promotion to B-class hero. At that moment, he remembered that he had met Moomin Rider a few days before. Saitama then learned that he had written the letter and they became friends while eating Odin. A few weeks later we see the great seer Shibabawa, and she predicted a monster who will destroy the world. Then we see in the mountains that a frozen monster has thawed and awakened to destroy humanity. Godzilla ran into the city and he wanted to take over the world. Suddenly the Hero Association fired missiles at him, but they did no damage. Then a fighter jet arrived, sending heroine Tornado into battle. She flew in Godzilla's direction and looked down at the weak monster. Godzilla then asked who she was, but Tornado ignored him and was called back to base. Godzilla was angry because she called him a weirdo and she was annoyed because he interrupted her phone call. Godzilla tried to stomp her, but she dodged his attack. Following this, Godzilla planned to fire a laser beam, but she crushed it with a meteorite from space. Meanwhile, Silver Fang was teaching his martial arts techniques, and he asked if the two visitors wanted to try it. Saitama and Genos were not impressed with his technique, and Silver Fang's student couldn't tolerate them looking down on his master. Then they learned that his best student was Garo, who went out of control and seriously injured all the strong students. Followed Silver Fang explained that Saitama was stronger than him, but a Hero Association employee showed up. They learned about a new danger, and the threat level was at Dragon. Genos asked his master to accompany him, and Saitama said he had nothing to do anyway. Later they arrived at the Hero Association HQ, and Silver Fang was greeted by Samurai Atomic. Silver Fang introduced Saitama and said that he will one day be at the forefront of the S-Class heroes. Afterwards, Tornado showed up, and she complained that a B-class hero was brought with them. Saitama wondered why there was a small child in the building, and thought that she had lost her parents. Later, all S-class heroes arrived at the meeting, and Genos understood that the situation was serious, because almost all S-class heroes from rank 1, 17 showed up. The only one who didn't show up was rank 1, 
and rank 6 of the S-Class heroes. Suddenly, Saitama asked if he could have some tea because he was dying of thirst. The board chairman of the Hero Association then appeared. He told the heroes that a danger appeared that could even endanger the lives of all S-Class heroes. So he asked if anyone was afraid and wanted to leave the meeting. No one left the room and Tornado began arguing with another hero. Then it was said that the great seer Madame Shibabawa was declared dead. They learned that the old woman had choked on a piece of chewing gum and died. Meanwhile, Puri Puri prisoner explained that Shibabawa is a seer who predicted catastrophes that could endanger the world. The chairman then talked about the most dangerous prophecy that she had written on a piece of paper. It was written in it that the earth would be in trouble. This is how they found out that in six months, a higher than threat level dragon or monster is on its way to earth. The heroes understood that the situation was serious and the world could be destroyed. However, they did not know when the catastrophe would occur. Following this, the whole building shook and they couldn't believe that the Hero Association HQ was under attack. Sky King planned to conquer the Earth with his family. Suddenly all of the Sky King's children were defeated and he was shocked because they were crushed like insects. Additionally, Earth was attacked by the Death Star. Then the chairman of the Hero Association learned that the catastrophe had arrived on Earth. Afterwards we see a boy who was saved by his father. He was scared and couldn't believe he saw the huge alien spaceship. A five-headed alien also appeared and wanted to kill them, but a hero stopped his attack. He managed to dodge in time and said that he is Samurai Atomic's student. Then the hero attacked the monster, and the chairman couldn't believe that the world will be 99% destroyed. Silverfang subsequently learned that the building was not destroyed because Metal Knight constructed it. The heroes wanted to go outside, and Genos noticed that Saitama was already on his way to the enemy. Suddenly, he was attacked, but he deflected the cannonball. However, more cannonballs were fired at him, and he sent one back. In the meantime, the multi-headed alien was regenerating, and he wanted to kill his enemy. He managed to seriously injure the hero with a hammer and looked down on his opponent. He then divided his body, but at the last moment, it was cut into small pieces. Samurai Atomic appeared, and his student warned him that the monster can regenerate. The monster couldn't surprise him, but he regenerated again. So his enemy was happy to fight against a strong opponent, but he didn't think they had a chance of winning. Then a group of S-Class heroes appeared and they looked forward to beat up the enemy. Puri Puri prisoner didn't want to lose again and he attacked his opponent. We then see the Hero Association desperately trying to evacuate everyone. Afterwards, Genos and another group of S-Class heroes gathered to fight the boss. Ronnie Coleman asked King to accompany them. Suddenly King replied that he won't come because he can't fly and Tornado became angry. Then we see Saitama and an alien general tried to stop him, but he was immediately defeated. Saitama looked for the boss and he destroyed the entire spaceship on the way. Meanwhile, the boss alien waited for his challenger to arrive. Then we see Lord Boros, who was on his way to see what was happening on his ship. Meanwhile, Gary was shocked that an invader had defeated all commanders of them. Saitama destroyed all the surveillance cameras and Gary feared that Lord Boros would accuse him of being incompetent. Suddenly Lord Boros appeared, and he was told that an intruder was causing problems on the spaceship. Boros said not to panic, and he was confident that his elite warriors will stop the intruder. Then we see the news were reported that a spaceship appeared, and all the main roads leading to City A have been closed. Many residents were shocked by the news, and the alien ship frightened the citizens. Sonic learned about the strong enemy through the radio, and he felt the urge to fight. Afterwards, we see Puri Puri prisoner again, and he was exhausted from his fight against Melzergard. Melzergard was able to regenerate despite all the attacks, and he planned to attack the heroes. Silverfang saw the attack coming and blocked his attacks. In addition, Melzergard was pushed back. He was angry, and he sent part of his body to tell the ship to throw bombs down. Unfortunately, Metalbat stopped his plan and ended up playing baseball with the flying head. Suddenly, he was informed by Gary that there is an intruder on the ship and that he should end the fight quickly to support them. Meanwhile, Metal Bat continued trying to destroy a head of Melzergard. The other heroes focused on Melzergard's main body and fought him with all their secret combat techniques. Samurai Atomic's disciples suggested that they should retreat, but no one listened to him. They were determined to defeat the enemy to save the world. After that, Melzergard was ordered to return to the ship immediately, but he was busy because he was attacked from all sides. Gary was surprised that the humans were stronger than expected, and he reported that Saitama had eliminated half of the crew members. 
so Melzergard ordered his friend to bomb his location. Following this, Melzergard's head was cut in half, and he could not believe that the invader had killed almost everyone. Afterwards, Metalbat noticed a marble, and he destroyed it. As a result, the enemy melted, and he told the others about the weak spot. Following this, Samurai Atomic began to slash the enemy to finally defeat Melzergard. Meanwhile, we see Saitama, and he has been warned that if he continues to destroy the ship, he will die. Gary was just scared, and Saitama didn't fall for his lie. Suddenly, Saitama burst through a door, and he discovered the control room. Gary then tried to scare him, and he used a Snapchat filter to change his body. Then we see an alien soldier, who was responsible for the bombardment. He thought that his superior had to go to the toilet. The reason he didn't answer was because Saitama wasn't afraid. He then used his gravity abilities and tried to kill Saitama. Unfortunately, his powers doesn't worked on Saitama, and the alien thought his name was Mob Psycho. After his powerful telekinetic attack, he thought Saitama was dead. Saitama thought it was rude to have a rock thrown at him and he threw the rock at Gary's head. He also asked the soldiers where the boss was. Meanwhile, Child Emperor found out that the ship's energy level was increasing and they couldn't evacuate everyone. One of the citizens was exhausted and Moomin Rider showed up to save him. Then we see an alien who activated the artillery of the ship and the heroes managed to destroy more marbles. Afterwards, the heroes were bombarded and Melzergard was sure to win this time. Suddenly the bombs stopped because Tornado used her telepathy abilities. She sent the bombs back and the enemy ship was destroyed. The Hero Association was impressed by Tornado's abilities. Afterwards, we see Moomin Rider and he tried to evacuate as many people as possible. Suddenly Sting and Lightning Mac showed up and they offered to help Moomin Rider on his mission. Slowly the heroes managed to fight back and fought bravely against Melzargard. Silverfang managed to destroy another marble and the enemy only had one head left. Suddenly, Silverfang was hit, and the monster managed to knock out the strongest one of the group. Melzegard continued to look down on humanity, and he intended to unleash his true powers. Then we see Lord Boro, and he was sitting on his throne. Also, he sensed that a strong enemy will arrive soon. Suddenly, Saitama smashed the door, and he appeared in front of the boss alien. Saitama was enveloped in a dangerous aura, and Boro sensed that he was the strongest warrior on Earth. He was excited for the fight, and wanted to know the name about Saitama. However, Lord Boro told him that he traveled to many universes because he was prophesied to encounter a strong opponent someday. Suddenly, he attacked Boro and said that he must not destroy other planets through boredom. Boro survived the powerful punch and Saitama was surprised. Afterwards, Boro unleashed his true power and he transformed into his perfect form that didn't impress Saitama. Then the battle began between the strongest hero of Earth against the strongest alien in the universe. Saitama waited for the attacks and his opponent managed to resist his punches. After a short moment, Saitama hit his opponent with a strong punch and his opponent realized that he had lost an arm. Lord Boro complimented him on his strength and Saitama respected him too. Meanwhile, we see Tank Top Master and he wanted to fight against the enemies in the sky in his own way. He was a huge rock against the ship. Suddenly, Tornado said that he is in her way and his pride was hurt. She used her telepathy powers and single-handedly destroyed the ship. The crew members were frightened and they were terribly afraid. Jinos was impressed by Heroin Tornado, and Drive Knight said that he will head home. Before he left the battlefield he planned to talk with Jenos. He warned him about Metal Knight, and told him that he is his enemy. Then we see Melzergard. he attacked Samurai Atomic and laughed like a typical villain. He said that he could already taste victory, but Silverfang recovered from his attack. Suddenly his body was cut, and Melzergard tried to regenerate. Silver Fang stopped his try to heal up himself, and he successfully managed to destroy the last marble of his body. Following this, Samurai Atomic praised Silver Fang that he was far too strong for an old man. The other heroes were happy about the victory, and they planned to destroy the alien ship in the sky. In the meantime, Moomin Rider managed to evacuate the remaining citizens. Saitama fought with his opponent, and Lord Boros went all out in the fight against Saitama. He managed to hit Saitama against several walls, but Saitama wasn't injured. So the two continued to fight and Boros used a dropkick. As a result, they fought outside of the ship. Then Boros said that he was impressed because no one had survived against him for so long. He shot an Iron Man laser beam at him and the entire ship exploded. Following this, Saitama took a strong blow and Boros was more than sure that he would win. The reason for this was that he came from a species that was the strongest living being in the universe and could always regenerate. Saitama was annoyed that he was talking so much and his enemy became angry. 
Lord Boro performed his special attack that wiped out many of his crew members. He also showed Saitama his Rock Lee moves, and he released the Eight Gate. So Saitama was stomped into the moon, and he looked bored. He then realized that he had to return to Earth, and he played with a Moonstone before returning. Following this, he flew back and his enemy was weakened. Suddenly Saitama landed on the ship, and the heroes thought that Tornado had caused the ship to fall. Meanwhile, Boros was angry, and he attacked Saitama again with all his strength, but he hit him in the stomach. He managed to push Boro back and Saitama began to initiate counterattacks. So he managed to destroy Boro's body, but he regenerated and increased his powers. He then unleashed his final blow, and he shot his laser beam at Saitama. The result was Saitama using his serious punch, and he reflected the attack back. He also defeated the enemy and saved the world from the threat. Afterwards, Saitama told him that he is really strong, and Boro was happy to have met Saitama. He knew that Saitama had not even fought with all of his strength, and he recognized Saitama as the strongest being in the universe. The spaceship then collapsed and Genos knew that his master had defeated the enemies. Then the heroes realized that they had to run away, and they wondered why Silver Fang was so fast. The crew members were desperate, and the ship crashed to the ground. Later, a Mai Mask showed up, and he wasn't happy after seeing the destroyed City A in front of him. He ordered Metal Bat to explain the circumstances to him, and he looked down on the heroes. Metal Bat replied that an alien ship appeared and they had taken care of it. Suddenly, Amai Mask became angry at the answer and he insulted the heroes. He felt they had failed and Samurai Atomic ran towards him. They said they did their best and Amai Mask called them pathetic. Metal Bat then became angry because the pop idol wasn't there in the fight. Suddenly an escape pod fall from the sky and Metal Knight appeared out of it. Metal Knight ignored them and Genos asked him why he hadn't helped them. The reason Metal Knight appeared was because he planned to create more powerful weapons through alien technology. Then we see Amai Mask, who continued to mock the heroes and Ronnie Coleman found surviving aliens. They didn't want to die, but Amai Mask eliminated them immediately. Ronnie Coleman was shocked, and he replied that they had no right to live. Genos realized that Amai Mask was acting like himself before he met his master. Later, Genos realized that Saitama hasn't returned yet and he was worried. Saitama found his way out, and Tornado wondered why a Class B hero was inside the ship. Then he ignored Tornado, and he wanted to go home with Genos. She was angry at being ignored, and Genos called her a spoiled brat. Suddenly he was smashed against a rock, and she planned to beat up Saitama too. Silverfang stopped them, and Saitama was worried because Genos was stuck in a rock. A few days later, all residents learned that City A was wiped out in one day. In addition, Metal Knight used alien technology and he built a stronger Hero Association HQ. Then more days passed, and the news reported that a huge monster appeared in City Z again. Pluton almost trampled a child, but Geno saved him in time. Then Saitama appeared and he defeated his opponents with just a single punch. He was disappointed to be able to defeat all his opponents with just one punch again, 